Hi everyone, welcome to Pacemaker Hours. Thank you ever so much for tuning in. As always, thank you ever so much for the support you guys keep giving me. You know, quite honestly, I forget the number of subscribers. I do apologise the way my voice is and the way I'm thinking. I'm just exhausted through, obviously, work yesterday. And um, quite honestly, as well, I feel like I've got a cold or flu coming because my nose has been running a bit. My voice is a bit, uh, but I go the extra mile for you guys on my days off. Famous last words, I'll probably get a call see if the ones be to work today. But you never know, might happen, might not happen. If it hasn't happened, I'll be recording the whole video and you're watching it on YouTube now. Yeah, I know I'm rambling. So, one thing I want to actually talk about, other than the main focus of the video why you tuned in there's a few things that i want to actually say that uh the future of this channel because obviously this article everyone's talking about i'm not actually going to say the number because i might get flagged down for it but <sighs> is it going to hurt my channels that i've worked hard for I really don't know at the moment, guys. I enjoy doing videos, but with this article, with the dubbed it as, with the number at the end of it, it's making a lot of YouTubers very tough to think what to do for content. I'm not focusing on this as a full-time job. I know YouTubers that do. Um, is it going to hurt them? Is it going to do this? Is it going to do that? I've got mixed feelings with that, you know. I'm not saying in a negative way or a bad way. We started off with nothing. As we start every channel while journey on YouTube. But when you work hard to get where you are, do this for full time. and I enjoy doing videos as a hobby. I've always done that. That's why I do it. I like to entertain people. That's the that's why I use YouTube. I've never made that much money when I had a partnership on my main channel. As such. But it got me by when I first ever had a partnership. You know, back then you used to make quite a bit. Unless you've got like millions of subscribers nowadays, then you can make your equity, you get sponsorship deals, etc. like that. But with me, I just do it as a hobby now. But is this going to be the end of my channels? I put my time and effort to make my channels the way they are. Who knows? I really don't know because I've got mixed feelings about it. I'm just uh, when I first heard about it, I thought, "Nah, this is not gonna work. This is not gonna work." But the only thing I feel like it's gonna hurt me on is probably my vlog that I'm doing in a month's time. You know, it's just upsetting that. We've got to this extreme to some fucking people to try and fuck us over. It's bad enough when you hear your videos flagged down for a bit of music coming on in the background of car stereos passing you. You know, you, you can't help that because, but Google flags it up thinking you've edited it in there. I've done stuff in the past to get around that is obviously not filming the windows down or if there's music in the background I will edit it over it with copyright free music like I always do but it came to the point where in the past where I've got flagged down by someone that appeared in the video and WWE claimed it if you know what I mean like I've met a wrestler like when I met Rob Van Damme WWE apparently got flagged down by WWE for what do you call it? 
saying a breach of their copyright laws or something. So now you can't even do fair use stuff. So I've tweaked my intro for that vlog that will appear on my main channel. That will appear on my main channel. So hope it goes through. You know when I upload it after when I edit all that together when I film it next month. You know, it's just a bad time at the moment being a YouTuber. It was bad enough when fucking they started taking the... What was it? Um, I'd said Apocalypse or whatever it was. What big YouTubers was dubbing it as and a lot of people was. and You know, it's a dark time to be... And... It, I think it's just people in the United Kingdom that are affected by it. I could be wrong. But just think that, yeah, there may be a lot of negative going around about this article, but you look at the people that have worked hard, put a lot of determination to do certain things with their channel and to get themselves noticed. You know, it's just... It, It is upsetting, you know. Well, I no longer get to see the channels that I like watching. You know, it's just one of those things, guys. It feels like a part of you is dying. I know it's a sad comparison, but it really is frustrating to see. It really is frustrating to see this happen. And it's not going to stop. It's been approved and everything. I don't know what date it's going to kick in. Is it going to kick in when I've uploaded this? Is it going to kick in when certain things are happening? You know? I'm really puzzled with the situation, what's going on. If anyone out there is making videos themselves and being already hurt by this, let me know. Please do. Please do. You know, because... I'd like to hear your opinion on this. Anyone that's watching this. Sorry if I seemed a bit soundtracked, but I'm just, like, overwhelmed by it all. You know, I'm overwhelmed when I get people, like, commenting on my videos. I get overwhelmed by people sending me feedback. Like, the other week, I had William send me DVDs. Yeah, fair enough, he's... William will call it compressing his collection down. But it was nice of him to go the extra mile to fucking give them to me that I don't have in my collection. So, what's this mean for when I do unboxings now? I have to design my thumbnails in a different way, if I, if I did, if you know what I mean. Am I not allowed to show what I've bought? Because if that appears in the video, will that get down for copyrighted? You know, it's bad enough that fucking certain things, when you, on Facebook, if you post, Certain things numerous times too quickly, they'll class you as spamming. What was originally social media designed for? To share your opinions, to share this, to share that, to share that. Sharing is caring, I've always been brought up by that. But now it doesn't seem like no one wants to share because of this article. You know, it's, it's a sad time, it really is a sad time to see and it's not just YouTube that's affected it's Facebook's affected so if we should share a fucking picture and it's got someone in there are you gonna flag it down for copyright you're gonna do this you're gonna do that it's gonna worry a lot of people 
because people rely on social media to advertise and they're not allowed to advertise now you know it's just, everything is fucking up in the air you know I made friends from this I don't make money from this you know I really don't know guys, I really don't know. Another thing that I want to talk about is Manchester United. I haven't talked about them in a while on this channel. It's great to see Ole Gunnar's whole show be our manager. You know, it stops all the rumours and speculations that Poch is going to be joining us next season, etc, etc. I'm sick of them fucking rumours. You know, I don't listen to them that often. When Oli, I was skeptical when he was in power, but he's done a lot for us since he's been here, and he's been announced as our full-time manager before the end of the season. That just proves how much of an impact he's made. Oli Legend is back at Old Trafford. It's great the fact he's got someone that gives a shit about the club. Someone wants to do something. I knew he was going to be announced in the GM. I just knew it. Just the way they're playing, etc. Yeah, we may have a few losses. The same FIFA, you can't win every game. Then again, I can't win every game on FIFA nowadays. Because of the Frostbite engine. Um, so, at least he's invested in his time well at our club. And I'm proud of having him as our first top team manager. I'm just wondering who he'll bring in in the summer. He's probably gave them ideas that he's got. I'm not listening to the rooms and etc. But if we get to the likes of Sancho, amazing player. If we strengthen our defence with Otherwild, Kieran Trippier, I would love them two at the club. Yeah, maybe nicking them off Spurs, but. What happens if we do a swap deal with Eric Bailly or players that are not performing? And you can have Ander Herrera if you want because he's rumoured in speculation he's done with Manchester United. You know, it's just a good time to be a Man United fan at the moment. Absolutely hey, great time. Test DJ Test DJ All right, so. The main focus why you tuned in. I do apologise if you because one of my dogs has got something wrong inside him, and you know, it's not, sometimes you have to get his feces out by hand, or not. He just has trouble going toilet. He's constipated all the time. Um. The main reason why you tuned in is about the dirt, the Netflix movie about Motley Crue. To say this was a Netflix movie, I was gripped from the start to the finish. I did not turn it off. I watched this after when I finished work. I bullshit, no bullshit whatsoever. I had my headphones on, watching it from PlayStation Four. Saying a sponsored video, by the way, I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon, anyway. Any of my videos, so this film was highly detailed to save it. I don't get me wrong, I do respect Netflix's work, they're doing working wonders on the shows that I like watching. Obviously, you've already heard me talk about sex education, the program, not sex education itself. I'm watching uh, Turn It Up Charlie, I'm enjoying that, you know, I've watched like the first two episodes and I'm gripped. And there's only eight shows, I wish they did shows that are like 24 episodes long, like some of the old series that used to be on TV. But anyway, they're on the ball with some of the Netflix original movies. And to say this came out. Just straight off the bat, 
to your subscription of Netflix, I was highly surprised. I thought they were going to shade away from certain things in Motley Crue's life, what they've done, but they didn't. They captivated the era, they captivated the characters of each actual man member that you expect around that rock and roll era. Is it rock and roll era? Or rock or metal era? You know, of the thriving 80s? That everyone, you know, when you have these people that hype up stories, how great rock was back in the day compared to it is now. You know? Granted. I give them full credit for doing this movie. And to say that I got the opportunity to see this movie, I might watch it again if I'm in one of those moods to watch a true story. I would love to then release a Blu ray of this. Because, quite honestly, it's just a fantastic movie. You know, it, it captivated the era perfectly. Incorporated every personality that you would expect from Motley Crue. I occasionally like listening to Motley Crue. Some of their songs were fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. But obviously, yeah, they've been through a lot of shit. And a lot of shit that I didn't realise that went off. Because I didn't listen to what people were saying to me when I was growing up. Listening to like rock music, etc. You know, to the point where you got fucking. I can't believe I'm saying this. Where Ozzy Osbourne's character's licking off fucking some piss off the floor that they needed a drink, and then fucking a guy fucking pisses. One of the band members pisses on the fucking floor, and then he, Ozzy Osbourne licks that up. I was surprised they were going to show that, but is this a sort of hint? Towards some way old form that we're going to get an Ozzy Osbourne movie from Netflix. Subliminally, even though he was around with the band, etc. You know, there's parts where I cringe. There was parts thinking, oh, fuck. Didn't realise they were that bad. And then they've definitely captivated the era from the film setting. The thing that really frustrated me about it was... They could have put like a 1980s camera filter, not film in HD. They could have put a 1980s camera filter to give that ambiance of that era even more. You know, but the way they captured everything from the state, from the sets to the. It's weird saying costumes, but the outfits they wear. Fantastic, absolutely fantastic. I think with b comparing to the likes of Medium Rhapsody, it's on that same level. You know, Queen did it their way, fine. Motley Crue did it their way. But you look at the way it was done, it was just fantastic, absolutely fantastic, epic thing but you look at the way Minion Rhapsody was done if if I recall I could be wrong they put like an 80s 70s 80s um, filter on the editing so it looked like it was actually filmed that around that era I could be mistaken but mistaken or not if they do that then it will captivate the era even more you know, granted a lot of people like HD, the like 1080p, the like 4K. But it would have been nice to have something to represent that era more. You know, that captivated it. You know, it was nice to see the subliminal cassette tape. You know, those little things that you pick up by watching this movie. That captivates that era. You know, but the way... It was done, it was just beyond belief that when you watch it, you would not have thought that was a Netflix movie. You know, you would have thought this would go to cinema, you would have thought this would go to Blu-ray or DVD, but not Netflix. 
they have definitely fought out of the box for this. I think they had certain band members being executive producers of this, so they were watching over the product as it was progressing. I'm really highly intrigued what they've got coming up next. Obviously, the only Netflix movie I'm looking forward to is the Hulk Hogan buyer. You know, so that's going to be an interesting watch within the next three or four years. I don't know when he's got a release date. I don't know when they start shooting. I don't know who else they're going to cast as certain cast members or whoever portrays. Obviously, I know the guy who played Thor, he's drafted in as playing Hulk Hogan. That's all I know at the moment. So, guys, I can't stress you enough. If you love rock music, if you love bios, go check this out. It's on your Netflix subscription. If you haven't got a Netflix subscription, it's just worth a loan. Just paying for that to go and fucking watch it. And you get a month fucking free. I'm not here saying it's like a sponsored video. But, guys, this movie is just freaking awesome. Absolutely fucking awesome. You know, it just blew my mind what Netflix can actually fucking do. For that a little amount of month, I'm really surprised they're not going to do this on a Blu-ray or DVD. You know? It wouldn't surprise me if they end up being in the Oscars list next year. Hey, Beanie and Rhapsody was there. Hey, we have fucking Roma from, from Netflix. A film that I can't get into because it's not English. So, on a nutshell, it's worth watching. I give this 9 out of 10. If they put that 80s filter on the camera instead of filming it just in HD, then it would have been 10 out of 10. You know, I don't normally give 10 out of 10, 5 out of 10, etc. like that. You know, but I was just mind blown, you know. Don't know what the next film I'll give you my thoughts and opinions on. At all yet. Because obviously I've been into the pictures recently. Because obviously I got paid monthly. Might go and see, uh, go and see Shazam next week. I don't know. You know, I pop up as and when I can. You know, obviously to talk about films I've just watched. If it falls on a day off, fine. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But I gotta admit, Netflix should done a fantastic job there. But anyway, guys, if you do support my channel, if you're able to watch this, please, please, please hit that subscribe button. Leave your comments down below, and obviously, I'll catch you guys soon on another edition on here on Pacemaker Diaries. Thank you ever so much for tuning in. I know it's been a long video, but I hope I didn't waste over 23 minutes of your life. That you'll never get back. But until next time guys. Catch you guys soon. Stay safe. Stay beautiful. Whoever you are. And keep on supporting. See you guys soon.